caliber 50 Browning machine gun now is the standard arm for the air service. It may be mounted in a fixed position in the fuselage as a synchronized gun, firing between the rotating propeller blades. Its maximum rate of fire is 850 rounds per minute, or 14 shots per second. These are one-second bursts. The weapon also may be mounted in the wing. In all fixed installations, the gun is aimed by pointing the plane at the target. For flexible use, the gun is placed in a free-swinging mount so that the gun itself can be aimed. The gun can be fed from either side. Changing the side from which the gun is fed is merely a matter of repositioning several parts. Clipping of the caliber 50 machine gun is carried only as far as necessary for instruction to clean the gun properly or to make adjustments and repairs. Parts must not be forced into position. To strip the gun, the cover latch is released and the cover opened. The cover group is not removed unless necessary to make repairs. By releasing the back plate latch lock and back plate latch, the back plate is removed. The driving spring rod is removed by pulling the end to the left, thus releasing the retaining pin from the hole in the side plate. The bolt is drawn to the rear until the bolt stud is in line with the hole in the side plate, and then the bolt stud is removed. The bolt is taken out through the rear end of the gun casing. Using the point of a cartridge through the hole in the side plate, the spring lock is compressed and the oil buffer, barrel extension, and barrel are removed by pulling to the rear. By pressing the accelerator forward, the oil buffer assembly is detached. By pressing on the head of the piston, the oil buffer is pushed out of the body. The oil buffer tube assembly should not be stripped any further than this, unless it is necessary to replace the spring, because the latter is under sufficient compression to cause serious injury. In disassembling the bolt group, the extractor is removed by rotating it upward and pulling out from the bolt. The bolt switch and bolt stud are lifted up. The cocking lever is turned fully backward, and by pushing down on the sear, the firing pin is released. The cocking lever pin and cocking lever are removed. With the thin end of the cocking lever, the sear stop is swung out of its groove. The bolt is turned over Sear stop pushed out of engagement. And removed from its slot.
The sear is depressed. And the sear slide removed. The sear and sear spring are taken out. The firing pin extension and the firing pin then will drop out. In assembling the bolt group, the firing pin and extension with the nuts down are inserted in the bolt. And push forward until the striker projects through the small hole in the front of the bolt. The sear spring is seated, and the sear placed in its guide. In a flexible gun, the square end of the sear slide can be either to the right or left. The slide is inserted, and by pressing down on the sear, it is engaged. The sear stop is inserted, pushed down as far as it will go, and swung into its recess in the bolt. The cocking lever with a rounded nose to the rear is placed in position and held in place by inserting the pin. The correctness of the assembly is tested by pressing forward on the cocking lever to cock it returning the lever to its rear position and pressing down on the sear. The click of the firing pin will be heard if the assembly is correct. The stud is inserted. The bolt switch is placed over the stud. And the extractor inserted in the bolt being sure the flange is under the collar. In disassembling the oil buffer group, the oil buffer body is held bottom up in the left hand. The index finger is placed between the depressors and the prongs of the accelerator. The stud on the lock spring is disengaged, and at the same time the accelerator is rotated to the rear. The lock spring then is forced out. The accelerator pin is driven out and the accelerator removed. In assembling the oil buffer group, the accelerator is placed between the depressors with the tip up and rounded surface to the front. Then the accelerator pin is inserted, taking care that both ends of the pin are flush with the sides of the body. The lock spring is positioned over the slot in the body, depressed into the cut, and pushed forward until the stud is seated in the hole. The oil buffer tube assembly is inserted in the body and pushed forward as far as it will go. The barrel is unscrewed from the barrel extension. The locking spring is removed by sliding it forward out of its seat. The breech lock pin is pushed out and the breech lock removed. The breech lock is assembled with the bevel faces to the front 
and a double bevel on top. The pin is inserted, taking care that both ends of the pin are flush with the sides of the barrel extension. The locking spring is replaced in its seat. And the barrel screwed into the barrel extension. To reassemble the weapon, the barrel extension is held in the left hand and the oil buffer assembly in the right. The accelerator is held up under the shank with the index finger. The breech lock depressors are started into the guideway and the oil buffer is pushed forward as far as it will go. This complete unit then is pushed into the casing until it is locked in position. The cocking lever is pressed forward in the bolt and the bolt inserted in the casing, being careful not to trip the accelerator forward. The bolt is pushed forward until the hole is lined up with the enlarged opening in the side plate and the bolt stud is inserted. Inserting the driving spring rod, the bolt is pushed completely forward and the pin is seated in the side plate. The back plate is replaced, the latch lock released, and the back plate locked in position. Being sure the bolt is fully forward, The cover is closed and left, and the trigger pressed to relieve the tension on the spring. In this gun, head space is adjusted by obtaining the proper distance between the bolt and the barrel. Failure to adjust head space properly will cause sluggish operation and frequent stoppages. This illustrates proper head space adjustment. The base of the cartridge is held against the face of the bolt and the cartridge is fully seated in the chamber. If there is too much head space, that is, if the end of the barrel is screwed away from the face of the bolt, the cartridge will not be fully seated in the chamber. The explosion tries to drive the loose cartridge forward into its proper position in the chamber. If the head of the cartridge is held firmly in the T slot, the explosion results in a separated case. Only the rear part of the case is extracted, leaving the forward part in the chamber. Head space is adjusted properly when the gun is fully assembled. This gun has too much head space. The bolt is loose. With the point of a cartridge, the barrel is turned until the action will just close. Now the action will not close, and head space is too tight. ease back one notch at a time. When the action will just close, the barrel is unscrewed two more notches. Care must be taken to avoid burring the surface of the barrel. The rate of fire was affected by the adjustment of the oil buffer. Turning the buffer tube to the open position results in an increased rate of fire. Turning the tube to the closed position reduces the rate of fire. Two notches from the open position will give them a rate of fire consistent with proper function. The kind of attention given this weapon largely determines whether it will shoot accurately and function properly when needed. The bore and chamber must be kept in perfect condition. The moving parts also should be cleaned and oiled lightly using a brush. Cloth or waste never should be used, as lint may be left in the gun. Be sure the adjusting screw is tight against the buffer disc in the back plate, using a combination wrench. 
Never take it for granted that the oil buffer is completely filled with oil. This is very important, as the gun will not function properly if there is insufficient oil to take up the recoil. Both filling screws are removed. The oil is started to flow, then the nozzle is inserted into one of the filling holes. Pressure on the oiler never should be released until the nozzle has been removed from the hole, thus avoiding air bubbles in the fuel. As a final check, functioning of the gun should be tested by hand using dummy cartridges. Before loading the weapon, the safety bar is placed in the F or safe position. In loading, the double loop end of the belt always is entered through the feed opening until the first cartridge is beyond the belt holding claw. This may be done with the cover either closed or open. With the cover closed, the bolt is pulled completely to the rear and released. The extractor now is gripping a cartridge in the feedway. Pulling the bolt again completely to the rear and allowing it to spring forward, Pulls another cartridge into the feedway, where it is gripped by the extractor, and the first cartridge is thrust into the chamber. The gun now is ready to fire. 